Hello there. Welcome back. This lesson is a continuation of the last lesson. In the last lesson, we looked at how fault tolerance is handled in producers and consumers. In this lesson, we'll see how fault tolerance is handled in Kafka brokers. In Kafka, a topic is divided into partitions. We know that already. When a producer publishes a message to the topic based on the partitioner used, the message will end up in one of the partitions. As a user creating the topic, you can specify the number of partitions you would like the topic to have. In our illustration, we have a topic with five partitions, and this means at runtime each partition will be assigned to a node, and messages coming into each partition will eventually be persisted or stored on the disk. If the data is persisted on disk in each partition, how long the data is retained? The data inside the partition is retained for seven days by default. So we have seven days for our consumers to consume the messages in the topic or partitions. Let's say partition one in our illustration is assigned to node A and partition two is assigned to node B and partition three is assigned to node C, so on and so forth. We are in the process of consuming. What happens when node A goes down in the middle of our consumption? How do we recover from node A failure? Can you guess? Again. Put on your big data hat and try to answer. Yes, excellent, you guessed it right. When we have partition on only one node, there is no way we can tolerate the failure of node A. We can replicate the partition to more than one node and then we will be able to tolerate failure. Perfect, sounds good. It is very similar to Hadoop's HDFS, right? Where each block is replicated to three nodes for resiliency. There is one small, rather big complication with replication in a high-speed messaging or streaming system like Kafka. How do we keep the replicas in sync? Because the data or information is constantly changing as new messages come in. That's the nature of messaging system, right? We can get thousands of messages in a second. For resiliency, most topics in production are created with a replication factor of three, which means the partitions in the topic will be replicated three times across the nodes in the cluster. Kafka will elect one of the replicas for each partition as the leader, and the remaining replicas are followers for the partition. For example, in the illustration, let's just take partition one. Replicas for partition one are stored in node A, C, and D. In our illustration, replica in node C is elected as the leader for partition one and replicas in node A and D for partition 1 are the followers. When a producer would like to publish messages to a topic, it will ask Kafka to provide metadata about the topic. Kafka will return a list of partitions along with the leader for each partition. When the producer publish message to a partition, the message is only redirected to the leader. So leader is the first one to get the message and comments, meaning saves the message to the partition. So leader for a given partition will always have the latest message for the partition. The followers will periodically reach out to the leader and fetch messages from the leader to keep the messages in the partition in sync with the leader. So the follower's task is to fetch messages from the leader and keep the partition replica in sync with the leader. Replicas which are in sync with the leader are labeled as in-sync replicas. In-sync replicas, or ISR for short, is a very, very important concept. When someone says they've worked in Kafka in one of our interviews, we always ask them a bunch of questions on ISR. So pay very close attention. Here is a rule. A message is available for a consumer to read from a partition only after the message is written, or in other words, committed to the in-sync replicas. Again, let me repeat because it is very important. A message is available for a consumer to read from a partition only after the message is written or in other words, committed to the in-sync replicas. So let's understand what an in-sync replica means. When a producer is publishing thousands of messages per second, it will be very hard for the followers to stay in sync with the leader, agree? Also, if you think about it, the leader gets the message first. So in our case for partition one, Replica in node C gets the message first, since it is the leader. And followers in node A and D has to fetch the message from the leader. So node A and D can never be in sync real time with the leader in a true sense. 
there will always be a lag between replica in node C, which is the leader, and replicas in node A and D, which are the followers. Replica.lag.time.max.ms is the property that helps Kafka determine whether a replica is in sync or not. By default, the property replica lag time max ms is set to 10,000, which is in milliseconds, so 10 seconds. The property is used to identify the followers who are dead or stuck or simply lagging behind the leader beyond an acceptable limit. Let's assume replica lag time max ms is set to the default, which is 10 seconds. If the follower did not issue a fetch request to the leader in the past 10 seconds, it could mean that the follower could be experiencing an issue, or the follower could simply be stuck. In that case, the follower replica will not be considered as in-sync replica and will be taken out from the in-sync replica list. Also, if the latest message in the follower replica is older than 10 seconds compared to what the leader has, the follower replica will be not considered as in-sync replica and will be taken out of the in-sync replica list. Why? This could indicate that the follower is slow beyond the acceptable 10 second limit in keeping up with the leader. Now let's walk through a scenario to understand the concept in detail. At the very beginning, the leader and follower replicas will be in the in-sync replica list or ISR list. So all three followers, A, C, and D are in the ISR list. So a consumer reading or consuming messages from the topic will only be able to read a message once the message is committed to all the three replicas. Everything was going smooth for the first 30 minutes. And soon Kafka noticed follower replica for partition one in node D did not issue a fetch request to the leader in the past 10 seconds. So immediately follower replica on node D will be removed from the ISR list. Now there are only two replicas in the ISR list for partition one, leader replica in node C and follower replica in node A. The rule is consumer will be able to read the message once the message is committed or returned to all the replicas in the ISR list. So now the consumer will be able to read the message once it is committed to the leader replica in node C and follower replica in node A. Now let's say after 30 minutes, the most recent message in follower replica for partition one in node A is over 10 seconds older when compared to the latest message in leader replica for partition one in node C. This would mean the follower replica is lagging behind the leader beyond the acceptable 10 second duration. So immediately Kafka will remove node A from the ISR list. So now the only replica in the ISR list for partition one is the leader replica in node C. So from now on, our consumer to read a message, the message has to be only returned to the leader replica in node C because that is the only replica in the ISR list. This is not great because we don't have any in sync replica for the partition one other than the leader. So as long as the leader is alive, we'll be okay. But when the leader goes down, we are exposed to failure because there is no other replica which is in sync that can assume the leader. Our ideal scenario is that we have more than one in sync replica for each partition in the ISR list. So when the node holding the leader partition fail, Kafka will pick a replica from the ISR list for that partition and make the replica as a leader. Both producer and consumer will be redirected to the new leader and all will be okay. If we run into a situation where there is no in-sync replica other than the leader replica in the list and the leader failed, then both producers and consumer pushing or reading messages from the corresponding partition will receive an exception. Now, let's say in your application or use case, data loss is preferred to total downtime. Then we can set the property unclean leader election enabled to true. And this will instruct Kafka to elect a leader who is not in sync when there is no in sync replica available in the ISR list. As of Kafka version 0.11.0, .0, unclean leader election enable is disabled by default. So you would have to set it to true if you prefer data loss over total downtime. But in many cases, data loss is not acceptable.
if data loss is not acceptable then we need to set min in sync replicas to greater than one so for example when the min in sync replicas is two as soon as there is only one replica in the isr list the producer will get an exception and kafka will stop taking new messages this is a nice way to prevent data loss this will give kafka administrators a chance to see what is wrong with the brokers and potentially fix the issue in most real world scenarios replicas can go out of in sync replica list for a short while due to a glitch in a network or due to system load or something very minor and they get added back to the isr list as soon as the replicas catch up with the leader the the follower replicas are said to be in sync when the recent message in the replicas is less than 10 seconds old from the leader replica and also the follower replicas made a fetch request to the leader within the last 10 seconds as long as we have more than one replica in sync for all of our partitions in the topic we don't have to worry about failure when we have replicas that stay out of the isr list for a long time we will have problems for this reason kafka administrators usually have alerts set up to monitor isr list for all partitions from all the critical topics all right in this lesson we learned about how fault tolerance is handled at the broker level we learned about the leader and follower topics and also we saw what does it take for follower topics to stay in sync with the leader and what happens when replicas go out of sync and how broker failures are tolerated with that let's end this lesson in the next lesson we'll install and configure kafka and in the following lesson we'll create a topic and we'll use a producer to produce messages and use a consumer to consume messages it'll be very interesting see you in the next lesson